Hi, good afternoon, Saints. Um, I have here another uh, video on the simplicity of salvation and how simple it is from Scripture and how to obtain eternal life. And there's a lot of false uh, gospels being preached today in the church. Unfortunately, Satan is doing his job of crippling the gospel of grace by adding an overload of works to it, whether it's uh, repenting of sin, whether it's saying some prayer, whether it's uh, obeying the Ten Commandments, whether it's obe obeying uh, God, so on and so forth. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And then there's folks who take away from the gospel. And um, it's very important to know the simplicity of salvation from Scripture on how to obtain eternal life. And um, once you get to know that from Scripture, it'll, you'll be able to see and detect um, the false gospels that are being preached today in the churches. And that's that's the unfortunate thing is uh, as well as that. There are many well-meaning believers in the church today who have a very skewed view of uh, salvation, and they don't really comprehend biblical salvation because they have they have a muddied, muddled up view of, of grace, and they think that they have to earn grace by being baptized or by doing X, Y, and Z, and they somehow think that, you know, that's the way of salvation. Um, so it's important to be grounded in Scripture. What does Scripture teach on on salvation, how to obtain eternal life. This is very important, and in fact, it's one of the, I would say it's probably the most important doctrine of, of all Scripture, because if, you know, you get this wrong, then, you know, it's, it could cost you your life. And um, it's important to know what salvation is in Scripture, and how to obtain, you know, obtain that eternal life, the free gift of God. And there's a very popular uh, gospel, a false gospel being preached today by many believers and even a very well-known uh, believer named John MacArthur who preaches this false gospel. And he believes it and it's called uh, Lordship Salvation. And Lordship Salvation teaches that in order for someone to have eternal life, you have to submit to the Lordship of Christ. You have to make Him the throne of your whole life. And um, if you don't do that, if you're not obeying Christ constantly, then you can't be saved. And that's just a false gospel. It's works. And it's a gospel that came right out of the Puritans. And the Puritans were hardcore work salvationists. Um, I don't care what anybody says. I, I know that they teach works. Um, I have read some of the writings in the past, and they teach works. Um, but this video is not a focus on Lordship Salvation. Uh, this video will be a focus on what is the way of salvation, that God has made it simple and plain for lost sinners to obtain eternal life. What is that doctrine of salvation? And I have my Bible. If you have your Bible out with you, the King James Bible, you can follow along. I have my Bible out here open on John 3.16. Or, sorry, chapter 3. A uh, very well-known chapter, especially with Nicodemus. And um, I'm going to start reading from... 14 to uh, 16. Sorry, 14 to 18. 14 to 18. And then the Word of God reads, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And in the Old Testament, if you remember uh, the Israelites, if I remember, uh, if they were bitten by the snakes in the wilderness, uh, God told Moses to put up a serpent, to lift up a serpent in the wilderness, and then all those who would see the serpent would be healed from their uh, snake bites. 
And it's a type of Christ that all those who look on Christ by faith will be saved. Which is why he, uh, John uses that um, this uh, from, from the Old Testament. The story of Moses, which is a type of Christ. And that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That also, though all those who believe on Christ would not perish. The perish here is not just simply a physical death, but it's referring to eternal death, which is uh, hell, but have eternal life. And then it continues, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So we know from Scripture that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So when it says world, it's referring to all men. God loves man so much that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever, meaning all people, anyone, that any if anyone will believe in Him, he will not perish, meaning he will not go to hell but have everlasting life. And it only takes one time to look at Christ by faith. The moment that person places their faith on Christ, they are saved. And it continues in verse 17. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So God did not send, so God the Father did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So one that's condemned is not, is the believer. The believer, the person that has placed their faith on Christ is not condemned. Only the person that has not believed on Christ is condemned already. So the person that has believed on Christ is not going to suffer God's wrath. That's what Paul tells us in Romans. So even just from these scriptures, we could see that faith is the condition, the one and only condition. I mean, and there's a lot here in the book of John. Um, I don't have the time to go through all the scriptures in the entirety of the book of John. But just these few scriptures, we see that the only condition that a person receives eternal life is just faith. Nothing else. Not, not, there's not a mention of repenting of sins. There's not a mention of obeying God. There's not a mention of, of saying a prayer. There's not a mention of obeying the Ten Commandments. There's not a mention of baptism. Um, so on and so forth. And... Uh, we see from here that the one and only condition is simply faith. Faith in Jesus Christ is what saves. Now I'm going to go to other scriptures. And I'm going to go to the book of Acts. You can follow along. I'm going to go to Acts 16. Acts 16, verses uh, 30, 31. I'm going to start at uh, 29 and 31, 31. And this is the story of the Philippian jailer in Acts. In fact, this is one of the most, this is the most important question ever asked in the entirety of Scripture by the Philippian jailer. And it's only asked one time, and it's located here. In verse 29 reads, says, Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And look at it, Paul and Silas's response. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. It is that simple. Believe. The Philippian jailer was under con brought under conviction when the earthquake fell. And he asked them, trembling down at Paul and Silas, and he wanted to know what he had to do to be saved eternally. 
Paul and Silas could have told him anything. They could have told him to believe, to uh, obey Christ. They could have told him, well, if you want to be saved, just say this prayer first. Uh, if you want to be saved, um, make Jesus Christ the throne of your life. You have to obey him. You have to obey the Ten Commandments. Oh, you first have to be baptized. They didn't say any of those things, or they didn't even tell him to repent of his sins. All they told him just simply believe. It was believe. You notice the only condition is just belief. Not once is not nothing is mentioned of him. Of of, or sorry, of Paul and Silas mentioning any of those things to him. Just simply believe. And we see that in, in the rest of the story that the Philippian jailer and his family um, eventually do get saved because they believe on Christ. They eventually preach to them the gospel and they believe. Now some people say, well, because they've believed and therefore their whole family gets saved. Well, not so because there's a comma there. The commas are in Scripture are very important. It says, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, comma, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. There's a comma there because it separates the events. That if the Philippian jailer would believe on Jesus Christ, he would be saved as well as their family. If their family would also believe on Christ, they too would be saved. That's what the comma is, is there because it separates that. If there would be no comma, it would pretty much show that if the Philippian jailer believed, then his whole family automatically would be saved. But that's not what it has. Uh, the Word of God has a comma there. Because the comma is separating the events. That their family would also be saved if they believe, placed their faith on Christ. And I'm going to go to um, Acts 8. The story of the Ethiopian eunuch. Now I'm not I'm not going to read the whole thing cuz I want to focus on the part where it shows that the eunuch believed. So I'm going to start at verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they went they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, "See, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. And he went they and when they went sorry, when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Now, if you notice that Philip preached to him the gospel, because Philip, the eunuch, was reading a part from the book of Isaiah, and it was Isaiah 53 he was reading concerning uh, Jesus Christ's death for our sins. And Philip comes next to his chariot. He joins him. And you know the whole story. He, uh, he goes on top of his chariot. And eventually he explains to him what he's reading. And he used that as a springboard for the gospel. And it gave him a great opportunity. And as you see in verse 36, they went on their way. They came, they were close to a certain body of uh, natural water. And the eunuch said, see, well, here's water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And the other translations will remove this verse that he, where he believed, and they just leave it with verse 38. But this verse is very important because we know from uh, baptism comes after salvation. And if you notice, it says that, Philip tells him that if he believes with all in heart, or if he believes with all his heart, he would that he may. So the Philippian jailer, 
or sorry, the eunuch was told by Philip that he had to believe with all his heart. So if you notice the one condition is belief. It's belief. Not once is mention of repenting of sins or obeying the Ten Commandments, saying some prayer. It's belief. And then we see that the Philippian, uh, sorry, the eunuch answered and he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, it's not his words that saved him. Now, one might argue that, oh, well, you have to confess Jesus Christ with your mouth. Well, there's no scripture that says you have to confess. A lot of people use Romans 10.9 as their proof text, yet not understanding the context of what Paul is talking about there. The, say, the Romans 10.9 is specifically written to the Jew at the time, dispensationally. So what, what saved the eunuch here is his faith in Jesus Christ. F Philip told him what he had to do to be, to be saved. And we see the eunuch uh, believed, that he believed. He said he believed. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So his faith is what saved him. Not him confessing with his mouth. It's his faith that saved him. Because the uh, Philip told him exactly how to, how to be saved. Now I'm going to go to Romans... Uh, Romans 1.16... Romans 1.16 reads, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. This is a very powerful verse. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The reason he's not ashamed, because it is God's power unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So God's power for salvation is the gospel. And notice the one and only condition, it's belief. Not anything is mentioned, it's simply belief. That's God's one and only condition. You know, it often surprises me how believers just can't take the scriptures for what they actually say. They have to add something to, to the simplicity of salvation, to the gospel of Christ. Jesus Christ did all the work for us. There's nothing left to do, only to simply, if you want to be saved, in order to receive eternal life, one has to believe in the gospel. And the gospel, and you may be asking, well, what is the gospel? The gospel is not found in Romans 10.9. That's, that's just not the gospel. And often believers would go to Romans 10.9 that's not the gospel. The gospel, if you want to know what the gospel is, it's found in 1 Corinthians 15. And I'll read uh, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain." So Paul is reminding the, the brethren here in, in Corinth the gospel that he received and the, the same gospel that Paul received he also uh, preached to the uh, Corinthians. And he says this is a gospel that they received and wherein they stand. This is the gospel they stand in. He says, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Now, he's not saying, well, if you keep in memory, you, me you must make sure that you're keeping that memory of the gospel. Otherwise, you're just not going to be saved. That's not what he's saying here. The keeping in memory has to do with, because uh, he talks about the, uh, the, um, the resurrection, so there's only one gospel, and Paul preached it to them. And that's the gospel that saved them, that they received. 
and that they stood on. So by no means is it uh, is he saying that they have to somehow persevere in keeping memory of the gospel because they already were saved. And then continue in verse uh, 3, and then 4, this is the gospel. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That is the gospel, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That is the biblical gospel. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that this is the same this is the gospel that Paul the apostle was talking about. This is why Paul could say in Romans 116 that it that he was not ashamed of it, because the gospel of Christ is God's power unto salvation to everyone that believeth. It is that simple. That simple. God's one and only condition is always faith. Faith in the gospel and faith in Christ is what saves. And from scripture, there are two things that a person must believe on in order to be saved. And I'm going to read it in Ephesians, if you want to follow me there. Ephesians uh, chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses uh, 12 and 13, it reads, That we should be to the praise of His glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So we see here that Paul is telling the Ephesian uh, believers that they they first trusted in Christ after they had heard the gospel of of salvation the gospel which is his death burial death burial and resurrection so uh, they they believed on Christ after they heard the gospel and they believed it so scripturally there are two things that a person must do to receive eternal life that is believe in the gospel believe that Jesus Christ died for them, was buried and rose again, and placed their faith in Him. The moment that pers a person, a lost sinner, does that, they are saved. And they are forever saved. They can never lose their salvation. But I'm not going to focus on that in this video. That's for another, another study. So it is that simple. Notice that it's, uh, he uses the word trusted believed not a single mention of of repenting of sins of, of obeying the ten commandments there's not a mention of being baptized of saying some prayer none of those things save whatever work it is x y and z it does not matter none of those things saved nothing can be added to the simplicity of the gospel this is the simplicity of salvation in all the scriptures we have seen, all say to believe, to trust. No, no, nothing is mentioned other than in just those simple words. Just believe and to trust. And there are believers today who try to twist the word believe to mean, uh, or faith to mean obedience. I've seen that on YouTube where believers say, oh, faith means obedience. It never means obedience in the Bible. People, believers who hold to this view have a very false view never faith never means to obey it means to believe it means to trust and in the same uh book i'm going to read ephesians 2 verses 89 and i have them highlighted here just because it's uh some of my favorite verses in scripture for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works, lest any man should boast. What, what a pair of great verses. Paul tells us here that it's by grace we are saved through faith. 
And I'm going to go quickly to Romans uh, chapter 5. The way you receive grace is through faith. That's the only means. Romans uh, chapter 5 verses uh, 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen. The only way Paul tells us that faith is the access, it help, it helps us to access uh, grace. Grace is accessed by faith, brethren. It's not accessed by works. It's not accessed by any type of work. No matter what it is, it is not accessed that way. It is accessed by grace. Which is why Paul says we are saved by grace through faith. It's not through works. It's not through baptism. He didn't say for by grace are you saved through baptism or through repenting of sins. None of those things save. It is simply faith is magnified here through grace. And it says that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So salvation here. The, the gift here is not faith. And Calvinists will read this and say that the, the, the gift is faith. It's not. The, gi the gift here is not faith. The gift is salvation. Because we can't earn it. That's, what, what's, that's what's being talked about in these verses. It's salvation. He's, he doesn't mention the word salvation, but it's pretty obvious what he's talking about. It's, it's about salvation. He's not talking about faith. The gift is faith. It's a free gift from God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And how many are there believers who boast in their own salvation, saying, oh, those, their salvation got them this. Uh, oh, well, I, you know, I, you know. recently I spoke to a Lordship Salvationist, maybe like a week ago. I mean, and this guy was just full of pride. Um, spoke to him online and uh, here on the YouTube and this guy was coming at me because I was making salvation very simple. And it seems like he was bothered by that. So he said that salvation is by obedience. Well, then I asked him, well, have you been obeying Christ? Have you obeyed Jesus Christ fully since the moment you got saved? And the guy said, absolutely, with an exclamation point. This is what happens when people get in these work systems, what it ends up happening is that the person gets puffed up in pride and they're self-righteous hypocrites. This is what happens with, with Lordship Salvation or any other system is that this, this, this prideful spirit starts to come in and they get very prideful and act like holier-than-thou type of people. And I, I know the guy was lying because there's no believer on the face of the earth that's obeyed Jesus Christ fully since the moment they've been saved. And you know, I, I humbly admit that I haven't obeyed Jesus Christ fully since the, the moment I've been saved. I have moments where I sin, moments where I fall. And it's the same with you as well, brethren. And... uh that's the type of attitude with guys who are trusting in their works, who are puffed up. And Paul tells us here that it's not of works, lest any man should boast. Because if it were by works, everyone would be boasting in heaven. All of us would be boasting. I include myself too. We would all be boasting. We'd be saying, well, you know, I got myself in heaven because of my works. It's very easy to, to slip into that. But we must remember that salvation is a free gift and there's no boasting. Boasting is thrown out of the window. Don't be fooled by these uh, Lordship Salvation guys or any of these work salvationists like John MacArthur, Paul Washer, um, all these guys, these popular preachers and teachers who want to lead believers astray into these work system that you have to do X, Y, and Z, that it's not, that faith isn't enough. And I've seen these guys say faith isn't enough. And don't be fooled by that, brethren. We've seen from Scripture that salvation is simple, it's free, and it's only received by faith. Thank you. Amen.